This lasts around 24 hours on my skin. Probably even more. Let's talk about it. Hello people, my name is Nixon Dice and you are watching Smelly Cat. Thanks in advance for liking, sharing, subscribing and also hitting that bell icon. Today we talk about this little beauty here. One of the strongest, longest lasting, heaviest projecting, hard, hard hitter for my collection. It's called Blue Oud by Ibrahim Al Qureshi. Not Abdul Samad Al Qureshi, they may sound the same, but they're two different houses. In fact, uh, a couple of their scents are also similar in terms of the scent. For example, I've got this one called Khashab Al Oud from um, Abdul Samad Al Qureshi, and Ibrahim Al Qureshi has their own version called Kasar Al Oud. This is a limited edition packaging, but if you see the original bottle of this one, uh, which is not the limited edition bottle, it's slightly fancier. That bottle and the Ibrahim Al Qureshi bottle are exactly the same and the scent inside are also very similar. And they both claim that they were the first ones to come up with it. Ibrahim Al Qureshi started way back in 1929 uh, with a very small shop outside uh, the Holy Mosque in Mecca, whereas Abdul Samad Al Qureshi is even older uh, and they claim that their first shop was uh, way back in 1852. I sent some sort of family feud there. Oh, I could be completely wrong. Anyways, enough backstory. Let's talk about Blue Oud. Now, Blue Oud is part of the Al Wafia collection. This is Al Wafia written in Arabic, and the collection has six scents in all. I personally have bought four of them, and all of them are bangers, to be honest. But here's a funny thing I actually lost my first bottle that I bought of this one, uh, but I think I've lost it somewhere in the house itself. Uh, my wife and I started searching. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't find it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who loses a bottle of fragrance in their house? It happens, okay? I know I'm not stupid. I just have too many fragrances. I have around 1,000 now, even more than that. And even though I have a dedicated room for it, sometimes what happens is um, when I'm taking a picture or something like that, I leave it here and there, and then I can't find it when I need it. My wife thinks I left it um, in a hotel room back in Switzerland, which is where I remember wearing it last. Although I think, or at least I claim to her that I remember bringing it back. Anyways, couldn't find it. Uh, so I went back to the store and I picked a second bottle so I could do a review on it and share it with you guys. Let's have a quick look at the presentation. This is the box that it comes in. This is actually the outer sleeve, I'll show it to you. Uh, this is, like I said, Al Wafia, the name of the collection written on top. The only difference between this one and my older box is that this bit here, this logo unit, was a little, uh, you could say, puffy or protruding out a bit uh, or debossed compared to this one. Otherwise, it's completely the same. You have, like I said, Al Wafia written here. You have the name of the fragrance, Blue Oud, and the Ibrahim Al Qureshi logo under it. At the back again, you have the logo, the ingredients list out, and the batch code. I'm not sure you can see it, uh, but this one, the second bottle I got, is a January 2023 batch, and my older one was a March 2002 batch. No differences between them in terms of the scent, but yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. Once you take the sleeve out, you have the box inside. Now, this box is... Um, Similar for the entire Wafia series. So you don't have the name written on the box. You won't see Blue Oud, like I said, written on this, uh, but that's the same for all the other boxes. The name just comes on the sleeve. One thing I like is this smooth and satisfying box. Whether you're putting it back in or you are taking the bottle out, it's got this smooth, silky sort of thing happening, uh, which if you're doing a lot of ASMR or unboxing videos, uh, you'll really like. The bottle rests inside this coffin here, not over the top like you'd find in say uh, Arabian Oud, but does the job and it's really nice, sleek and classy. The bottle for this one comes in this nice deep blue uh, color and the shoes look really nice. Uh, as usual, my camera is not doing it justice, but this is a nice heavy bottle, but it sits very comfortably in your hand. 
The cap isn't too heavy, but it isn't too light either. It has the Ibrahim Al Qureshi logo on it. It has this outer covering, which is metallic. And then the inside is plastic. And finally, this is how it sprays. This is just such a wonderful scent. Okay, now here are the official notes from the website, but I feel that they're missing a lot of notes. So I'll also tell you what my nose catches. So the top notes are blue lilies and oud. The heart notes are patchouli and leather and the base notes are tobacco and amber. Now the blue lily mentioned in uh, the top notes is personally something that I haven't come across um, as a single note, but there is definitely something watery musky uh, this floral note which they probably are calling blue lilies in fact i would say more than anything i get a whole lot of saffron in the opening more than any other floral note yes the opening of this one is a beautiful bitter sweet deep honey like saffron uh, with amber light watery floral and what feels like damp Cambodian oud. The saffron also has some sort of freshness in this one, which will make you believe that it's got some sort of fresh note, uh, like a sweet fresh note, say, think of something like a candied orange or something around those lines. I believe this is because it does actually have something sweet and boozy up top, uh, but the booziness doesn't come from an alcohol note or a, an actual boozy note like rum or whiskey. Rather, it comes from something fruity. Uh, think of something like a plum or dried fruits. Now, rose is not mentioned as a note in this one, but there's definitely rose in this. And you'll start noticing it about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, the rose is not dominant in this at all. Uh, the rose is very sparsely used and thank God for that because we have enough rose oud combos already. This is also when the resinous, balsamic, uh, slightly tarry side of the fragrance starts slowly showing itself, adding to the finesse and the warmth of the scent, along with some spice like nutmeg and pepper. After that, it is pretty much a dance between three wonderfully balanced notes, patchouli, leather, and oud slowly waltzing maybe doing the tango a little and this goes on for the next 20 hours or so there's also very cleverly used ambroxin in this one which not many people will actually spot but yes it's there and it gives this uh, fragrance a bit of a you could say fluff you know uh, and it gives it uh, legs and it also gives it that creamy addictive touch so as a scent this is beautifully done i don't think anything could have been done differently for this one uh, it's loud but it's not screechy uh, it's smooth and silky it's rich and refined uh, for me personally this is a 10 on 10 for the scent because it is a very complex scent uh, so don't let the word blue in it fool you if you like blue freshies uh, summer afternoon holiday vibe kind of fragrances this is not it this is serious middle eastern stuff that gives you a sense of royalty now i haven't seen other fragrance youtubers review on this one to be honest although i know there are quite a lot out there uh, especially recently but yes i'm part of a few fragrance groups on facebook and a lot of people are comparing this one to two scents one spirit of dubai's buzz and the second fragrance is uh, louis vuitton's ombre nomad now i have so many messages even asking me uh, if this is a clone of those two fragrances the simple answer is no you want a good clone of bars it doesn't exist you want a good clone of louis vuitton's ombre nomad try royal knight by the woods collection now this is its it's its own scent it's not like bars it's not like ombre nomad although i would say i think i understand why that uh, comparison is being made it's because of that smoky leather that is uh, in this fragrance this is its own scent and if you buy it keeping that in mind you are going to love it for me the only similarity i get with any other scent um, and that too very little and only once things start drying down is with something from my collection called 
patchouli wood by Arshmal. This is from the W series. But that is also only because this one has that patchouli, leather and oud combo in it. Coming to the performance, the word beast or monster is so lightly used by us fragrance reviewers, right? But it should be kept for scents like this one. Longevity for me is 20 plus hours on this one. In fact, on my skin, it has even lasted 24 hours. True story, quick story time. I took this with me to Switzerland a few months back when my wife and I went there on holiday. It wasn't exactly winter, but it was the start of winter. But hey, it's Switzerland, so it was already pretty cold. On one of the days, I wore this at eight in the morning, right after a shower, and we had a long day planned. We come home uh, only at midnight, only after midnight, in fact, and I was so tired, I just ended up crashing. So at the end of the day, I didn't have a shower again. I wake up the next morning and my pillow, me, my wife, we all smell of blue and strongly. I'm not saying like it's a skin scent, but I just detect a little of it. I wake up in the morning and all I can smell is blue. Oud. So I had a shower again. I wore this one again. Again, we had a long day and I come back at the end of the day, have a shower at the end of the day. And again, when I hit the shower, as soon as the water hits my body, it just smells of blue oud, like strongly smelling of blue oud, uh, like someone has, you know, sprayed it in the room or in the shower with me. So in terms of longevity, I haven't tested it more than 24 hours, but I'm guessing that yes, this actually, um, you know, this actually smells or this actually lasts for longer than that even. And on clothes, this lasts for for days you know there's no disputing that so longevity i would say is 20 plus hours for me and the siage is strong but in a very polite sort of way so don't go spraying this in <laughs> in a closed space because it's loud but once you've sprayed it and you've headed out the siage is just beautiful and that's why i go like four to five sprays of this uh, and max it's a unisex scent but i believe men will like this more and it is better suited for cooler weathers i've actually worn this to work quite a few times whenever i have an important presentation or a meeting and i just want to feel like i own the room i reach out to this fragrance but again it's not a work scent or an office friendly scent uh, depends on where you work maybe it works better when uh, you know you're suited up but don't think of this as a office friendly fragrance because it's not finally the price here in dubai this one is uh 220 dirhams which is roughly around if my maths is right 60 dollars now i'm not sure of the price outside the uae but if you manage to get this in between the 70 to 90 even the 100 dollar mark just grab it, grab it with both hands because this is definitely worth it. And that's the video. If you have any suggestions, if you've tried this, if you have questions about it, do ask me in the comments. Thanks once again for liking, sharing, subscribing, and also hitting that bell icon. Until next time, keep smelling amazing.